Okay, hello everyone. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about um, remote debugging with gamma ray. Who here knows what what gamma ray gamma ray is? Okay, that's that's about half. Nice. Um, that's not how it's supposed to work. Ah, no, it works. Okay, so gamma ray is um, an introspection tool for Qt. That means you can attach to an arbitrary Qt application, no modifications necessary whatsoever, like with a regular debugger, and look at the Q object hierarchy you have in there. Um, as you might know, Q object provides some uh, some introspection features already, so you can query it for its properties, for its signals and slots, and so on um, at runtime. And yeah, building on top of that, um, we add, I think, in total now 24 higher level tools, stuff like a, a model view browser, um, a scene graph inspector, a state machine visualizer, so that kind of stuff, um, that allows you to work on the, um, yeah, so kind of the same conceptual level um, with the debugger as with the frameworks you are designing your application. Right, if you ever try to single step through a model view implementation, um, you know that, I mean, the debugger is great, but sometimes it's very useful to have something that that gives you a, a higher level view on, on what you're working with. Um, and that's the idea behind Gamma Ray. So a few examples here. Um, we have a cute example with the QState machine. That's one of the standard examples in there. And we can visualize at runtime what's happening in that state machine. So it, it plots you this, the state machine and it shows you where you currently are, where you're coming from, and yeah, what's going on there. And a state machine is that's particularly useful because that's a graph and your code is linear. And right, following that in a debugger is, is equally painful as with model view. Um, another thing we can do is uh, help you with. Uh, Debugging layouting. So if you ever wondered why you have like this empty space in your dialog, you can just click on it. You get an overlay that shows you how the layouts and margins are set up. Uh, so it points you right to the source of that problem. Um, if you can compute the like hierarchical affine transformation matrices in your head, that is boring for you. Um, for the normal people, that is the scene graph viewer. So it shows you. Um, the various items in a geographics view scene graph and how they are transformed, where they are transform more, uh, transformation origins, um, how the transformations propagate through the scene graph and that kind of stuff. And of course, much more like this fancy visualization of the, the object hierarchy. Um, so how did Gamma Ray work so far? Um, we used the DLL that contains like the core logic to, to do the introspection as well as the, the actual debugging UI and injected that into the application we are, we are going to debug. Um, that's very easy to implement, uh, worked fine. Um, but then there's a couple of reasons that came up to, to change this. Um, and the most important one um, are embedded devices. That's something where we see a, a large rise in, in Qt usage on, and I guess about how many of you are using Qt on embedded? Okay, that's about 40%. Um, on embedded devices, you usually have um, a rather small screen. Um, the gamma ray UI barely fits on a 24 inch desktop screen, so that's kind of a problem. Um, some devices even don't have a screen at all. Um, some devices only run like a full screen application without window management. So even if we manage to bring up the debugger UI on the device, you can't get to the actual application anymore. So that's kind of useless. And in some cases, you might not even have access to the actual machine um, your software is running on because it's a big industrial machine that is halfway around the world and you want to debug something on there. So some kind of remote support would be uh, extremely useful there. Um, but there's more. There is um, the rise of something like Qt Quick, uh, Qt Quick 2, and um, BlackBerry Cascades. They don't require a Q application anymore. 
And the queue application is the requirement for, for us to bring up um, a widget UI, right? So if I only have a queue GUI application or even a queue core application, I can't even bring up my, my UI in process. So that's also something where we need remote support to have the, the UI um, out of process. But even if you're only working on desktop, um, having the debugger UI in the same process gives you all kinds of interference, right? If your process brings up a modal dialog, like an error message in exactly that moment where you wanted to debug the error condition, and it's blocking your debugger. That's rather annoying. Um, and there's all kinds of other interference, right? So if you rely on queue application top-level widgets to just give you the widgets of your program, and suddenly there's debugger stuff in there, that might confuse your logic. And the other way around, if you are debugging a highly customized application, and it messes up the style of your debugger with some fancy custom colors and like big touchscreen buttons. That's also kind of annoying. So we want full separation between um, the debugging tool and, and the target application. So how did we do that? Um, Gamma Ray is heavily model view based. Um, we started that in a time where we thought that the proxy model is the answer to, to every question, every and the solution to every problem um, might have made the code somewhat complex in, in some scenarios, but it really helped us now. Because model view gives us a very nice separation between um, like a server side core part and the actual UI that runs in a separate process. Um, so all you need is um, a Q abstract item model that as its data source uses a model in a separate process, right? Easy. Um, unfortunately, there are some, some minor details there that make this actually quite tricky. Um, the first one is Q model index, right? That's a very transient data structure that you can acquire, then you do something with it, and it becomes invalid as soon as you enter the next event loop. If there's a TCP socket in between, you always enter the event loop. So Q model index is kind of useless. So the first thing we needed to do is map that to something that is somewhat more persistent and independent of internal pointers or anything else you might have stored in there. Um, OK, that's doable. So basically just a path through the, through the model. Um, then there's the, the slight problem that QAbstract item model is a very synchronous API, um, which also doesn't really work together with, um, with a, like a delayed TCP remote connection. Um, well, you can also fix that with adding um, logs and um, or synchronization barriers so that your client is always aware of there has been a model reset or, and something like that. Um, the problem is, as soon as you start to introduce that, you add run trips between client and server communication and the whole thing becomes rather slow. So um, we added a tiny cache on the, on the client side to fix that. and. Um, that started to work rather nicely. Then we added a proxy model on top to sort it. And the proxy model has a tiny problem that it queries data for all rows, not just the stuff that's on screen. Um, completely breaking performance again. So in the current state of development, we have a yeah kind of a trade-off. We didn't manage to build something that is um, perfectly secure in, in the sense that there can't be any race conditions and fast at the same time. So um, since that's a debugging tool and you know what changes in your application, you might not need like a perfect race-free behavior. Um, so you might not want to use that in a med medical application or something like that. But we ended up with something that actually performs well enough for, for our use case. Um, on a bit of a lower level, we. We have some places where we actually need trigger actions in the other process. Um, that can be done very nicely and very uh, generically using the uh, meta method uh, part of uh, uh, QObject. That's kind of a solved problem. Um, QDBus does that. QScript does that. So um, you can reuse that for your own remote invocation as well. And on the lowest level, we have QDataStream. That, like on paper, is the perfect solution for this. It hides the fact that you have uh, maybe Qt4 and Qt5 on the client or different architectures, different operating systems. 
Um, but there's like two small details we run into um, that you might also encounter when doing a Qt4 to Qt5 port. Um, first thing is, every time you use QDataStream, call the set minimum version function and set that to the minimum Qt version you support. Because the data stream format changes all the time unless you explicitly tell it which version you actually want to support, and then it actually works fine. And the other detail we run into is that the abstract item model user role enum changed from 32 in Qt4 to 265 in Qt5. So if you serialize that over a network, things start to kind of go wrong. And that's something you might also have in your model code where you accidentally assume numbers or specific yeah, specific values for your role, and they change from Qt4 to Qt5. So um, that's very hidden. You don't see that in the API. Stuff still compiles, but you get interesting results. Um, but yeah, lots of talking about the, the internal details. Does that actually work? Um, we have the client running on all the major desktop platforms, just like before. Um, additional target platforms now are embedded Linux, QNX, and Baby 10. Um, on x86 and ARM. Um, additional platforms might work. I know that Android, for example, compiles, but nobody has tested that yet. And most of the tools are actually, like the higher level debugging tools are already working remotely. I think the only two ones missing right now is the Qt text document browser and the Qt script engine debugger. But I mean, if you don't need them, we're almost there. And um, I mean, the obvious next question is, where do I get that from? Um, we hope to have the Gamma Ray 2.0 release that officially has the remote debugging support um, out later this year. Um, if you don't want to wait that long, um, development happens in the open on, on GitHub, so you can get the, the current version um, just from GitHub and, and try it out. And if you don't even want to wait that long, we have a live demo at the KDAP booth just outside of that door um, with a Raspberry Pi as the, the target and a uh, Linux desktop connecting to that. And you can introspect the um, acute quick application running on the Raspberry Pi. OK, that's it from my side. So.